Hi guys, last year one of my favourite bookish things to join in with was Victober or the Victorian October Readathon. It runs for the entire month of October and this year it is back. And I have a very exciting announcement because this year I am one of the hosts of Victober, which is so lovely because I did enjoy it so much last year. It really was a highlight of my year and I got to find out about so many books. So I'm one of the hosts this year with Katie, Ange and Kate. I'll leave all the links to the their channels and their announcement videos in the description because they're going to have a similar video like this where they recommend books for their challenges. So we are doing challenges this year just like last year but there's no pressure to join in with them if you don't want to. If you'd rather just read one Victorian fiction book then that is absolutely fine but the challenges are there for some kind of guide if you want to follow along with them and I'm going to try and read a Victorian book that fits into each one of the categories. So a Victorian book is from 18 37 to 1901 that's when it must have been published and we are going for books in the United Kingdom. We're going to try and read a range of books, I'm certainly going to try and read lots of different things so I'm going to talk you through all of the challenges now and then recommend books specifically for my challenge. So Katie's challenge is to read a Victorian book by a Scottish, Irish or Welsh author which I think is a really great challenge because I tend to read a lot of English Victorian authors and I think it's really hard actually to find out about a lot of other authors because we tend to stick to the same kind of author so that's going to be a really good challenge for me I know that it's going to really challenge me to find some new authors Kate's challenge is to read a supernatural book and I love the Victorian supernatural and how that ties into the gothic one of my favorite books is Wuthering Heights as I'm sure you'll know and I'm going to talk about that in a minute I love this challenge as well Angie's challenge is to read a book by a lesser known Victorian author which is another great one to find new authors. I think she's categorising this by authors with 12,000 or less reviews on Goodreads so you've got that number but I think you have a quite good indication anyway of what is lesser known. So Charlotte Bronte for example isn't going to be a lesser known author because Jane Eyre is one of the most popular books in the English language. Likewise Charles Dickens who is also a very well known author so you'll have a good indication of what is popular and what's not but you've got that guide of the Goodreads number if you want to follow that. And then our overall general challenge this year is to read a book by a female Victorian author. So this could just be any book by a female Victorian author but I think a good way of doing this is to combine it with one of your other challenges. So if for example you choose a female author for the supernatural challenge that ticks both boxes. So we're not going to be very specific and say you've got to read X amount of books during the month, you can read whatever you want, it's going to be pretty chill. And finally my challenge this year is to read a Victorian book that somebody else has recommended to you. So it could be in this video you might think I really like one of those books that you talked about, you can use that as your recommendation or I think a good way of doing this would be in the comments if you're looking for a particular book, ask and then someone else can answer it and things like that. I think that's going to be a really good way to do it and it might mean that you meet new people. I think it's just going to be a really fun challenge. So here are some of my recommendations of books that you can read that were written in the Victorian era. The first one is one I'm studying at the moment for English literature and it is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I think this would be a great place to start because it was written in the 1890s right towards the end of the Victorian period so you get all the history that comes before that and I think that really does influence the book. So this is about a man called Dorian Gray who has a portrait painted of him and he sells his soul to the devil basically and says that he doesn't want to age but the portrait will age and it's a tell all about morals and what it means to sell your soul and the consequences of that and it's quite creepy, definitely immoral. It was really hounded at the time it was written because it was so bad and for a modern audience it's obviously not but you still get the sense that what you're reading is wrong and I like that about it. I like how it makes you question yourself as you read it. It's a pretty short one but a lot is packed in so I think it's an easy one to read. The language is more simple than some of the other books in my list and certainly some of the other books in the Victorian period but I think it's a good one to start with because you can really understand the story and get to grips with it easily. Then I have Tess the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy which is one of my favourite books of all time. I love Thomas Hardy. I'm going to film a video all about his books at some point but I would like to read more before I do that because I don't feel like I've read enough to fully talk about him yet. But Tess of the Durbervilles I think is a really good place to start with Thomas Hardy's books. It's got a very interesting story all about 
about morality again, a lot of books during the Victorian period deal with morality because the Victorians were all about preserving your morality and so what you get is authors who push against that and really question what morality means and so a lot of them were criticised at the time for being immoral and I think that's a really interesting thing to look at. The subtitle of Tesla Delville's is A Pure Woman and so it deals with what it's like for a poor country girl to lose her virginity and have a child out of wedlock and so there is this intersection of class with social position and what that means for different people and the double standards of the day and I think that Tess is a brilliant character. I love the sense of nature in this book and whether God is a higher power or nature is and you have this difference between the two which I think is fascinating. You don't see in a lot of Victorian novels but I think you do see in particular in Thomas Hardy's. I think he's great for the portrayal of pastoral life and how it was for the working classes in rural communities to work because Tess for example is a working woman in the book but the way that she does that is different to some men and also it's different because of her class. She doesn't have the option of not working, she needs to do that and she really supports her family as well and her family are horrible and you're not really sure if they are bad people or it's just how they are and how much of Tess's circumstance is due to her upbringing and because of that her social class. So I think it's a really interesting book. It's a simple one on the surface but when you delve into it deeper there are lots of different ways that you can interpret it and a lot of fascinating things to look at. So I think this is a great place to start with Thomas Hardy's novels. And then the other Thomas Hardy book I'd like to recommend to you is Far From the Madding Crowd. I love this equally with Tess of the Durbervilles. They're very different books where Tess of the Durbervilles is more of a tragedy. This is quite a light-hearted book Book. I mean there are some bad things that happen in it so if you've read it then you'll know that it's not all light-hearted but Thomas Hardy tends to do that where his books have very high moments and very low moments and this has more high than low moments. So Far From the Madden Crowd is about a woman called Bathsheba Everdeen who inherits her uncle's farm and so she is another working woman but her position is very different to Tessa's in Tess the Lebervilles because Bathsheba is in a position of power now. She is an interesting character because she makes a lot of mistakes. She does the wrong thing all the time but I think that's what makes her a very well-rounded character and what makes her human and I think that she's often criticised for that for being girlish but I don't think there's anything wrong with that I think the problem is that we have this expectation placed on women and particularly in the Victorian era it's interesting to read about a woman who was very active and didn't just have a passive role within the family and uh, you know in the workplace. So Bathsheba does make mistakes but that's why I love her and I think that this is an early feminist text. Then I would like to recommend Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. Now this isn't one of my favourite books but I would still highly recommend it. I read it for Victober last year and it's a really short easy to follow novel that if you haven't read a lot of Victorian fiction before will really introduce you to that style of writing. It is set in the village of Cranford and so it's all about the inner society and it's on the edge of quite a big city or town and so it's quite insular. You have this separation between the town and the city and I think that's really what Elizabeth Gaskell is best known for. She's known for her work on industrialisation and I think that Cranford is slightly different to that but you can see the sense of rural life and how that differs if you were going to live in the city during the Victorian period. Bear in mind that if you do read this, it was originally written as a short story collection that was serialised and so it is slightly disjointed so when you read it you might not feel like there's a coherent story or a very cohesive story so that is something to bear in mind but I still think it's a great place to start with Victorian fiction and it's a short one too so you don't feel bogged down by it because it's only up until now that I'm really comfortable with reading big 600 plus Victorian novels so I do find them quite daunting so I think it's a good place to start with something a bit shorter. And now would it be any true Victorian video if Lucy didn't talk about the Brontes? No it would not. I can't stop talking about them. You know that. I did a whole video on the Brontes so I won't talk about them too much and it's just started raining which is very atmospheric. I feel like the Brontes are watching me as I make this video. So I did talk about these books individually in my Bronte video so I won't go into too much detail but I would like to mention them in the context of the challenges. So Wuthering Heights obviously a great one for the supernatural if you don't know about Wuthering Heights then 
there are ghosts, there are the atmospheric moors, and you're not really sure when you're reading it if the ghosts are real. I would say they are, some people say they're not, it's just a figment of people's imaginations, but I am for the case that Wuthering Heights is a supernatural gothic novel to its core and that's what it is. So again, it deals with morality and it's one of those books that was like, oh my gosh, somebody can't have written this because it's so immoral. That's what people said when it was originally published. But now, I mean, I still think you feel like that now because Heathcliff is a deplorable character. He is horrible. I will never understand why people romanticize him too much. Romanticize with a capital R, Yes, he is very much steeped in this idea of the Byronic hero, even if your definition of hero is slightly hazy with him. I mean, the characters are awful, they are really dreadful people, so I would highly recommend this one for the Supernatural Challenge. Jane Eyre is one that I think you could challenge yourself to read during the month, because it is slightly longer, but I think that if you're up for the challenge, you have wanted to read it for a while, then you should definitely spend the time reading it this month, because I think it would be great. And this and The Tenant of Welfare Hall would be great for the overarching challenge to read book by a female author because I think it's really nice to read a book by a female author that you feel is quite subversive and really challenges what it means to be a woman in Victorian society. So Jane Eyre in Jane Eyre is a small and plain character but she's got this fire in her belly that I really like. I think there's a real feminist issue of the ending and whether that makes the book feminist because she makes a decision in the end, I'm not going to spoil it, and I would say that it's her decision to make and because she makes that decision off her own back then that makes it ultimately feminist. But some people would argue that actually she's giving into the patriarchy but I would argue not. So that's an interesting question to consider if you read this. And then The Tenet of Wildfell Hall is a great one as well because it deals with abuse within marriage and what it means to be a woman when your husband is absolutely awful and treats you appallingly but you can't leave him because he owns everything that you have. He literally owns you. The marriage rules at the time were, if you're a woman, then you sign everything over to your husband. You have no rights. Your rights belong to your husband. And so within the context of the Tenant of Wildfell Hall, the main character, Helen, has a bit of a difficult situation, which is still difficult in this day and age, but is complicated by the laws of the day. So I do think these two would be great if you want to read a book by a female author. And I love the Brontes, so just do it because I say so. I love them. So those are just a few Victorian recommendations. You can check out everybody else's videos where they will also have recommendations. So by this point, you're going to be swimming with recommendations. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!